The Kanban Guide for Scrum Teams by scrum.org. Last updated in January 2021. Purpose. The flow-based perspective of Kanban can enhance and complement the Scrum framework and its implementation. Teams can add complementary Kanban practices, whether they are just starting to use Scrum or have been using it all along. The Kanban guide for Scrum teams is the result of a collaboration between members of the Scrum.org community and leaders of the Kanban community. Together, they stand behind the Kanban guide for Scrum teams. It is their shared belief that professional product development practitioners can benefit from the application of Kanban together with Scrum. Relation to the Scrum guide. This guide does not replace or discount any part of the Scrum Guide. It's designed to enhance and expand the practices of Scrum. This guide assumes the reader is operating a process using the Scrum framework, and therefore the Scrum Guide applies in its entirety. Definition of Kanban. Kanban is a strategy for optimizing the flow of value through a process that uses a visual, Work in progress limited pool system. Kanban with Scrum Theory. Flow and empiricism. Central to the definition of Kanban is the concept of flow. Flow is the movement of value throughout the product development system. Kanban optimizes flow by improving the overall efficiency, effectiveness, and predictability of a process. Optimizing flow is a Scrum context required defining what flow means in Scrum. Scrum is founded on empirical process control theory or empiricism. Key to empirical process control is the frequency of the transparency inspection adaptation cycle, which we can also describe as the cycle time through the feedback. When common practices are applied to Scrum, they provide a focus on improving the flow through the feedback loop. Optimizing transparency and the frequency of inspection adaptation for both the product and the process. The basic metrics of flow. The four basic metrics of flow that Scrum teams using Kanban need to track are as follows. Work in progress, also known as WIP. The number of work items started but not finished. The team can use the WIP metric to provide transparency about their progress towards reducing their WIP and improving their flow. Note that there is a difference between the WIP metric and the policies a Scrum team uses to limit WIP. Cycle time. The amount of elapsed time between when a work item starts and when a work item finishes. Work item age. The amount of time between when a work item started and the current time. This applies only to items that are still in progress and is also known as WIA. Throughput, the number of work items finished per unit of time. Little's law, the key to governing flow. A key tenant governing flow theory is Little's law, which is a guideline that establishes the following relationship. The average cycle time equals to the average work in progress divided by the average throughput. Little's law reveals that in general, for a given process with a given throughput, the more things that you work on at any given time on average, the longer it is going to take to finish those things, again, on average. If cycle times are too long, the first action Scrum team should consider is lowering work in process. Most of the other elements of Kanban are built upon the relationship between WIP and cycle time. Little's law also shows us how flow theory relies on empiricism by using flow metrics and data to gain transparency into historical flow and then using the data to inform flow inspection and adaptation experiments. Kanban practices. Scrum teams can achieve flow optimization by using the following four practices. Visualization of the workflow, limiting work in progress with active management of work items in progress, 
inspecting and adapting the team's definition of workflow. Definition of workflow. The four Kanban practices are enabled by the Scrum team's definition of workflow. This definition represents the Scrum team member's explicit understanding of what their policies are for following the Kanban practices. This shared understanding improves transparency and enables self-management. Note that the scope of the definition of workflow may extend beyond the sprint and the sprint backlog. For instance, a Scrum team's definition of workflow may encompass flow inside and or outside of the sprint. Creating and adapting the definition of workflow is the accountability of the relevant roles on the Scrum team as described in the Scrum Guide. No one outside the Scrum team should tell the Scrum team how to define their workflow. Visualization of the workflow, the Kanban board. Visualization using the Kanban board is the way the Scrum team makes its workflow transparent. The board's configuration should prompt the right conversations at the right time and proactively suggest opportunities for improvement. Visualization should include the following. Define points at which the Scrum team considers work to have started and to have finished. A definition of the work items, the individual units of value stakeholder value, knowledge value, process improvement value that are flowing through the Scrum Team system. Most likely, these would be product backlog items, PBIs. A definition of the workflow states that the work items flow through from start to finish, of which there must be at least one active state. Explicit policies about how work flows through each state which may include items from the Scrum team's definition of done and pull policies between stages. Policies for limiting work in progress, WIP. The second practice, limiting work in progress, WIP. Work in progress refers to work items the Scrum team has started but has not yet finished. Scrum teams using Kanban must explicitly limit the number of these work items in progress. A Scrum team can explicitly limit WIP however they see fit, but should stick to that limit once established. The primary effect of limiting WIP is that it creates a pool system. It is called a pool system because the team starts work pools on an item only when it is clear that it has the capacity to do so. When the WIP drops beyond, below the defined limit, that is the signal to be able to start new work. Note that this is different from a push system, which demands that work starts on an item whenever it is requested. Limiting WIP helps flow and improve the Scrum team's self-management, focus, commitment, and collaboration. Active management of work items in progress. Limiting WIP is necessary to achieve flow, but it alone is not sufficient. The third practice to establish flow is the active management of work items in progress. Within the sprint, this management by the Scrum team can take several forms, including but not limited to the following. Making sure that work items are only pulled into the workflow at about the same rate that they leave the workflow. Ensuring work items aren't left to age unnecessarily. Responding quickly to blocked or queued work items, as well as those that are exceeding the team's expected uh, cycle time levels. This is also related to service level expectation. Service level expectation forecasts how long it should take a given item to flow from start to finish within the Scrum team's established workflow. The Scrum team uses its SLE to find active flow issues and to inspect and adapt in cases of uh, falling below these expectations. The SLE itself has two parts, a range of elapsed days as well as a probability associated with that period. For example, 85% of work items should be finished in eight days or less. The SLE should be based on the Scrum Team's historical cycle time, and once calculated, the Scrum Team should make it transparent. If no historical cycle time data exists, the Scrum Team should make its best guess and then inspect and adapt once there is enough historical data to do a proper SLE calculation, and then establish uh, the SLE. Inspect and adapt the definition of workflow. 
The Scrum team uses the existing Scrum events to inspect and adapt its definition of workload, thereby helping to improve empiricism and optimizing the value that the Scrum team delivers. The following are aspects of the definition of workflow the Scrum team might adopt and adapt. Uh, visualization policies. For example, workflow states, either changing the actual workflow or bringing more transparency to an area in which the team wants to inspect and adapt. How we work policies. This can directly address an impediment. For example, adjusting whip limits and SLEs or changing the bed size, which is how often items are pulled between uh, between spades, can have a dramatic impact. Flow-based events. Kanban in a Scrum context does not require any additional event to those outlined in the Scrum guide. However, using a flow-based perspective and metrics in Scrum's events strengthens, strengthens Scrum's empirical approach. The sprint. The Kanban complementary practices don't invalidate the need for Scrum's sprint. The sprint and its events provide opportunities for inspection adaptation of both product and process. It's a common misconception that teams can only deliver value once per sprint. In fact, they must deliver at least once per sprint. Teams using Scrum with Kanban use the sprint and its events as a feedback improvement loop by collaboratively inspecting and adapting their definition of workflow and flow metrics. Kanban practices can help Scrum teams improve flow and create an environment where decisions are made just in time throughout the sprint based on inspection and adaptation. In this environment, Scrum teams rely on the sprint goal in close collaboration within the Scrum team to optimize the value delivered in the sprint. Sprint planning. A flow-based sprint planning meeting uses flow metrics as an aid for developing the sprint backlog. Reviewing historical throughput can help a Scrum team understand their capacity for the next sprint. Daily Scrum. A flow-based daily Scrum focuses the developers on doing everything they can to maintain consistent flow. While the goal of the daily Scrum remains the same as outlined in the Scrum Guide, the meeting itself takes place around the Kanban board and focuses on where flow is lacking and what actions the developers can take to get it back. Additional things to consider during a flow-based daily scrum include the following. What work items are blocked? What can be done to get them unblocked? What work is flowing slower than expected? What is the work item age of each item in progress? What work items have violated or are about to violate their SLE? And what can the scrum team do to get that work completed? Are there any factors not represented on the board that may impact our ability to complete work today? Have we learned anything new that might change what the Scrum team has planned to work on next? Have we broken our RIP limit? What can we do to ensure we can complete the work in progress? Sprint review. The, sprint, the Scrum guide provides an outline of the sprint review. Inspecting Kanban flow metrics as part of the review can create opportunities for new conversations about monitoring, monitoring progress towards the product goal. Reviewing throughput can provide additional information when the product owner discusses likely delivery dates. Sprint retrospective. A flow-based sprint retrospective adds the inspection of flow metrics and analytics to help determine what improvements the Scrum team can make to its processes. The Scrum team, using Kanban, also inspects and adapts the definition of workflow to optimize the flow in the next sprint. Using a cumulative flow diagram to visualize a Scrum team sweep, approximate average cycle time and average throughput can be valuable. In addition to the sprint retrospective, the Scrum team should consider taking advantage of process inspection adaptation opportunities as they emerge throughout the sprint. Similarly, changes to a Scrum team's definition of workflow may happen at any time. Because these changes will have a material impact to how the Scrum team performs, Changes made during the regular cadence provided by the sprint retrospective event will reduce complexity and improve focus, commitment, and transparency. Increment. Scrum requires the team to create, at minimum, a valuable, useful increment every sprint. 
Strom's empiricism encourages the creation of multiple valuable increments during the sprint to enable fast inspect and adapt feedback loops. Kanban helps manage the flow of these feedback loops more explicitly and allows the Strom team to identify bottlenecks, constraints, and impediments to enable this faster, more continuous delivery of value and knowledge. Endnote. Scrum is not a process or technique. It is a framework within which people can address complex adaptive problems while productively and creatively delivering products of the highest possible value. As the Scrum Guide points out, it functions well as a container for other techniques, methodologies, and practices. The flow optimization practices of Kanban provide Scrum teams with additional opportunities to inspect the right thing at the right time and then based on that inspection, adapt as needed. Kanban's hyper-focus on transparency, visualization, and flow maximizes feedback, empiricism, and ultimately, the delivery of value. History and acknowledgement. Kanban's use in the context of creative knowledge work mostly originated in 2006 on a team at Corbis, a media licensing company in Seattle. Those practices quickly spread to encompass a large and diverse international community that over the years continued to enhance and evolve the approach. This guide was developed collaboratively by Scrum.org, its professional Scrum trainer community, Steve Porter, Yuval Yeret, and Daniel Vacanti. A special thank you to Glodia Califano, Louis Philippe Cardingan, uh, Charles Bradley, Jose Casal, Andy Hiles, Jesse Howing and Julia Wester for their contributions. We also owe a debt of gratitude to all those practitioners who have in the past contributed to make Kanban a viable and successful Lean Agile strategy. Hope this reading of the Kanban guide for Scrum teams was useful. Um, Go forth and scrum with Kanban on.